on the third planet, between the two great oceans, is a nation of people who dare to dream of liberty and justice for all. In their pursuit of freedom, they've become a beacon of hope for all mankind. From the Founding Fathers, through this present generation, Americans have given their lives to secure these fundamental rights. They are the heroes we celebrate. And this is our country. Mommy, I sure do miss Daddy. I know you do, honey, but your daddy is a hero. I love you, 
Daddy. Welcome to the show. It is a coin to the show thing. If you want to coin, if you want to coin to my show, you can. Uh, the number is in my Skype. If you are, if you do have Skype, or if you don't have Skype, or you have a mobile phone, call the number one one five one four nine zero seven seven four five two extension seven five nine, and you will. Ring into the Andy Bond show, or if you have Skype and you want to be on on this uh, call, Andy Bond show one word. The call in sh you can call into the show right now, or we're just gonna play some music. I'm gonna I'm gonna relax my voice. If you have anything that you want to say, go right ahead. Call into the show right now. The phone line, the Skype lines, and the phone lines are open. Here is the most patriotic video ever.
like I said before, if you do not have a, if you want to call into the show, the Skype lines are open. Andy Bond Show, one word, the Skype lines are open. I know those are too many numbers, but you know what? That was the only numbers I could get here. I know it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful day in, in, uh, in Wisconsin, finally, after about five years in the winter, winter, uh, the bitter cold. We are finally having a nice day. Finally, Debra Daly uh, is in the house right now, listening to my show. It is a call into call into the show. Uh, basically, what this is is you can talk whatever you want, like no holds bars, anything that goes. <laughs> you gotta know it's on your iPhone. You gotta love that. You gotta love those technologies. All you have to do is like, doo -doo -doo. oh, and the bond show. Okay, cool. cool. Cool, I love those iPhones that you can now, yeah, uh, <laughs> you can. Okay, uh, so I'm glad that you are listening to my show. I know that, uh, of, of that. Wow, I cannot even say to the, I can't even talk to the avail, avail, available to call in. Okay. Wow, I cannot talk today for some odd reason. Blah, 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 blah. Ladies and gentlemen, but who cares? Uh, it's a, it is a call in to show. People can call in. People cannot. They can listen to my voice. I'm going to play some music here. And it is great because this is my chance to give back to the fans that have been following me and been helping me every single day. So, uh, so this is a, literally a call in to the show kind of day you can call into the show the number is in my skype chat right there the you and four people are listening right now holy cow four people are listening that is interesting so call into the show if you want to if you don't want to you can just listen to me i have so much stuff to talk about today it's unreal uh ladies and gentlemen thank you jesus thank you jesus i just want to say Support the Wounded Warriors project, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, we've been talking about that thing. This has been a non-stop talking point from from March 1st all the way to almost the end of March here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, wow. Seriously, I'm not kidding you. There was a lot, there's a lot of people that donated money, and I'm so glad. I know it is like, I know it's not... It's not like, oh, why do we have to donate money? But it is for a good cause. It's the Wounded Warriors Project. And let me, uh, uh, let me get some music here, please. Uh, Maestro, a little bit of music? I don't care what music we play. Something, something like a, uh, uh, something great, like something uplifting here. Uh, how about this one? Anytime now. Slow music. <laughs> yes, I like that. Okay, okay, let's bring this thing down. Okay, I love it. Ladies and gentlemen, the Wounded Warriors project is is so affordable. It's so cool. Donate your time, donate your money to the Wounded Warriors project, ladies and gentlemen. You can help the troops that are coming back from the war. You can help the troops that are coming back from the from 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 war having difficulty finding a job you can do it ladies and gentlemen this is christian this is christian birds lay lean lean on me we'll be right back on the Andy bond show here there is no choosing working the clay wearing their anger like a ball and chain
from his religion. We gotta stand up for the right to live in paradise. Ladies and gentlemen, W. Daly is in the chat room, ladies and gentlemen. W. Daly is in Dallas, Texas right now. It's a beautiful day. I wish we could get some reports on Dallas, Texas here because, hey, I wish I was in Dallas, Texas. I'm cold. Hello? Uh, heck, I'll be, uh, I know what I'll be doing in Dallas, Texas. The stars and stripes. Oh, do, do, do. Down in the heart of Texas. Oh, wait a minute. Is that right? The stars are... Let me get the YouTube video here. I have to do it. I'm sorry. I have to do it. If we're in... It, I have to do it. The stars and stripes. The star... S-T-A-R. The stars and stripes. Stripes. Is it deep in the heart of Texas? Deep in... Ah. Deep in... Into the heart of Texas. I wonder if that is the. You gotta be kidding me. Okay, where is it? The stars and. Is it right? The stars and stri. Oh. <laughs> Oops. The stars and stripes. Aha! Here's the theme song. We got it. We got it. Stars at night are big and bright, deep in the heart of Texas.
one lane in the gym, and that was the stars and stripes, uh, the, the deep in the heart of Texas song. That was for all the Dallas Cowboy people in Dallas, Texas right now. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to call into the show. If you have anything you want to say, if you have a beautiful day, if you want to say something to the co- or to the host of anything, if you want to call in, Skype lines are open, the phone number is is ready to rock and roll. Uh, we're going to play some more music. Here is Heaven We Needed to Hear, and this is for the troops tonight. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you are a serviceman and you want to call into the show, be my guest or type in my chat box. This is for the service people of the United States of America. Call into the show right now. Skype lines are open. Here it is. Heaven was needed in a hero. Today to see you. Oh, I had to let you know. If I knew the last time that I held you was the last time I'd have held you and never let go. Oh, it's kept me awake nights wondering. In the dark, just asking why. I've always been told you won't be called home until it's your time. I guess heaven was needing a hero. Somebody Stand up for what you believe and follow it through. When I try to make it make sense in my mind, the only conclusion I come to is a heaven.
ladies and gentlemen, it is true. Uh, so does do die, and so does do live. But it's always true. Heaven, and when so does die, heaven is needed a hero. And that's what I've been struggling with every single time when I hear the hear the news. A soldier died today, and protesters are protesting the funeral. And you're like, what the heck is going on? Why is it that people need to be protesting a soldier's funeral when when the family feels bad already? And you hear these protesters saying, You suck! You suck! God hates fags! God hates fags! Like that from the Westboro Baptist Church. I am talking about them. But it's funny because you have people that will stand strong. You have people that will stand strong like the patriotic bikers. And right now we're going to... I'm pulling up a video right now. It's called the Patriotic Bikers and the Biker Patriotic Bikers. Patriotic. Patriot. Oh, there's one here. Me typing. Two million bikers rallying into Washington D.C. remembering 9/11. Full video. Here it is. Uh, the Patriotic Bikers, uh, this is interesting. Uh, here, I'm going to show you two videos. Here's two million bikers rallying into Washington, D.C. remembering 9-11. Here's the full, it is 9-11-2013. Here, here it is. Uh, this is interesting. Like you can see here, folks, my name is Andy Bowen, and we are live from Washington, D.C. As you can see here, we see millions and millions of bikers. I wish I wish you could hear it. Crowd is, uh, the crowds are really, really, really supporting the troops right now. I wish you could hear the rolling of the minus. I wish you could see it. But the eyes could see we have about one million bikers. I'm not kidding you. One million bikers. That are, are just rolling into Washington D.C. It is the loudest biking parade I ever seen in my whole entire life. We have bikers from all over the country right now. Uh, this is amazing, folks. My name is Andy Bond, and I cannot believe I'm reporting this to you. Two million bikers repeat. Two million bikers rallying into Washington D.C. remembering 9/11. Uh, 9/11, 2013. This is cool. See, that is the first video, and now, and now, my favorite video of all times, this one, Patriot Bikers Protect Veteran Funeral from the Protesting West Burp. Gerard, Burp. Kansas prepares to say goodbye <laughs> to a fallen soldier. A helicopter crash in Iraq took the life of Corporal Richard Bennett, just 25 years old. As family and friends gather to grieve, a small group gathers to protest his funeral. They should have left his carcass right on the ground. The words and the signs are meant to shock. This radical group claims soldiers die because God is punishing America for tolerating homosexuality. But the family of Corporal Bennett won't see or hear them because the Patriot Guard has arrived. Bikers by the hundreds, many of them veterans, converge on military funerals as invited <laughs> guests. Because my faith says we can't operate in a vacuum, that uh, faith has to take action. As a veteran and a pastor, United Methodist Ken Van attends these funerals as often as he can. We're all gonna line up there. Okay. With their bikes okay. and their <laughs> bodies, they form a shield between protesters and grieving families. Their engines and patriotic music drown out the chanting. No family should have to face this type of hatred on the day that they're putting their loved ones to rest. Van says even if protesters stop showing up, he and fellow Patriot Guard members will continue to come to stand together as a show of support. 
not only from a from a patriotic standpoint, but also for the, the people to know that those in the church care about them, love them, and God is standing there with them. Ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna to listen to the full video of this. Pay a pay Patriot God, the last defense, full version of this, and let, uh, yeah, this is what I love doing. This is, uh, you can comment to the show if you have any questions, go right ahead. This is what I love doing here. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. There is something surreal about the moment a military staff. Sorry. Car pulls to the curb of the home. The age-honored tradition that sends military members to deliver the news that no family ever wants to receive. For those who are delivering the news, it is the longest walk they'll ever make. For no matter how well rehearsed, no matter how many times they formulate the words they know they must eventually say, each and every word will be torturous to deliver, and even more torturous to receive. I spoke the ever famous words of the President and the Department of Defense regret to inform me. And those words carry such life-changing, you know, a life-changing momentum with them. She said, two army men had just left her house. Run it at the I went totally numb, totally had, there was no feeling at all. I didn't, I, I, I just didn't want to believe it was true. I knew that. Brennan's parents being notified was going to take some time because there is no base or military organization within that's not National Guard within Oregon. And that I wasn't sure where the, their notification officers were going to come from. Up rolls a car, and just by the description of the car, you knew this was a government vehicle. I remember one of the first things that Linda said was, don't let him come to the door. I know she was still holding that hope, you know, that there was a mistake. Even my, myself, and inside myself, I was saying, uh, you're not coming to my house. You're going to somebody else's house down the street. It was, it was a way of holding off even for another minute or, or two minutes. The news of, of or the reality of what had taken place. Just 17 days shy of his 27th birthday, Army Sergeant Brennan Gibson and two of his fellow servicemen were killed when an IED obliterated the Humvee that they were riding in. He wasn't even supposed to be going out on that mission. It was a last minute mission. And they were kind of getting everything together and Brennan said, I'm going with you guys. And they said, no, you don't need to go. He said, no, my guys are going, I'm going too. He showed his care for others, even in an adverse situation and didn't give it a second thought. Parents are not supposed to outlive their children, and the pain you see in the eyes of those that have is truly heartbreaking. In the days that follow the death of a child, there is a vacuum so great and anguish so painful, a parent struggles just to get their feet out of bed and face another day. Unless you've lost a child, and especially to war, you really don't get it. I have never experienced any kind of grief like this before than what it's like to see your child die before you do. It's amazing because I'm going to stop the video and we're going to play it some more. But it's amazing how, how people can come together in such, such need and such hatred and such grief when, when, when your own is threatened by, by the people. And, and where is our government when we need help where is our government when we just need a a a hand to cry on a soldier to cry on a uh, a person to say please help me we are so so caught up in in this in in today's world that we can't ask for help anymore we are scared to death to ask for help because if we ask for help that's a sign of weakness that's a sign of i'm not good enough for you but ladies and gentlemen let me tell you this perfectly clear you can always ask for help it's not against the rules you're not weak you're not strong i always ask for help when i need help i always ask for help 
the government is a problem. You're right, Anonymous. The government is a problem. The government will not help, I know. But we are American people. We are tough. We are strong. We are the we are the most we are the most feared people in in the stinking United States of America, and we're holding like a we're 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 holding that. Oh, don't worry. The government is gonna f help you too. You're right. I love this. We anonymous too says your friends and loved ones are the ones to help you. Plus, you have help yourself. Surround yourself with loving, kind people. You're right. It's true, but so so many people do not understand that. So 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 many people do not understand that. Loved ones, friends, families, members, everybody that has been faced with hardship, with faced with so much, so much hatred in today's world, that we gotta stop it. We gotta remember that why I'm playing this Patriot Guard, the last defense, full version, is because we got to. We got to realize that we are stronger than the government. We are stronger than the government that is laying out the rules. We are stronger than anything, but we are scared. We are scared to death. We are like scared little individuals. And We Are Anonymous 2 says, <laughs> I love them because Anonymous and We Are Anonymous 2 are, are the greatest people that I ever know. Ever. I respect them dearly. I respect them so dearly because they give me every single time when I feel discouraged. They just give me power of wisdom and it's cool. We will rise. Here it is. Uh, you each will become stronger. And together, we will rise above the shit hole that's going on in the United States. And nor the hate, love instead. We all, we will rise. It's true. Anonym, we are anonymous too. Uh, it's true. We will rise above the hate. We will rise. But it's going to take time. Bravery and courage is taking action. Bravery and courage is taking action even though you are scared. You're right. It is so, I wish to I wish to God that Anonymous and We Are Anonymous 2 will come onto my show and just talk. Because they have a lot of stuff that are is 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 very true. Heck like I said before, and I'm going to say this again. If Anonymous and We Are Anonymous 2 ever wants to come on my show, they have free range of it, literally. I'm not kidding you. They have free range of it. They just have to call me up on Skype or call me up at that number that it's uh, it's in the chat room, the long number from uh, long number. They have free range of the show, literally. I'm not kidding you. They have free range of the show. So if they ever want to call me up, in the middle of a whatever I'm doing, like if I'm doing a music show and they want to call me up saying, Hey, Andy, you want to, can I say something? Of course. They have free range of the show because I respect them so dearly. And I'm not kidding you. I have no script in front of me. I have nobody in the back of me. And I, I'm me in my house alone. And I respect them dearly. I really do. Everyone gets scared. But... But by being brave and standing together, the forces of light, the force of light will defend the darkness. Ladies and gentlemen, that is true. We are going to finish that movie and we're going to play some more music. We're going to call, if you have anything that you want to talk about, literally, I'm not kidding you. Call into the show now. I don't mind if. If we are in the middle of a uh, of a dis uh, of a hot discussion between uh oh what is a good discussion? I love this. And the ones the one person uh, can take a stand by simply not complying with the term 
the tormental laws being imposed upon the American people by the arrangement assholes Obama and the powers that be. Ladies and gentlemen, that's right. And I'm gonna if we're not if we are not Mr. Two Still Stays here, we're gonna play we're gonna finish this patriotic God last defense and we're gonna and we are gonna I'm gonna stop this show and we're just gonna be talking about it. Like this is what we're gonna be talking about. This is what we're going to be talking about today. This patriotic guard, last defense, uh, calling to the show. Basically, if you have anything you want to say to the government, anything you want to say at all, this is a free voice. You can be, you can raise your anger. You can raise your hate. You can raise your anger with the government. But please, if you have an issue. Anonymous. Yep. We are your mothers, your brothers, your sister, your father, your family, friends. That's right. I love that line. We are your mothers, your brothers, your sisters, your fathers, family, friends. We are anonymous, too. We will not go away. You're true. Because our friend, your mother, your father, your friends will be there for you. They will protect you. You do not know how good you have it with your family. You do not know how good you have it with your friends because your friends will always protect you from from the hatred, from the hate, from the from I have so many friends on Skype right now, a speaker I mean. We anonymous to anonymous, uh Slater four fifty four, uh Jonathan, uh Debbie Daly. I can't even mention all my friends. And and that's true. We will not go away. We will live free. We are many. I think we can. I think I can finish this. We are many. We will be heard, and we will not. We will not forget. We are anonymous, right? Or oh, did I just screw that? Did I just screw that up, literally badly? Did I screw that? I know that you say we are anonymous. We. We we won't forget. We won't back down. Wow. Wow. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just screwed that up badly. I am so sorry. I am so sorry. Do you forgive me? Please forgive me. I did not. I do not know the. Wait a minute. Hold it. I got a great idea. We're going to. Ha <laughs> ha. You know what? We we will get. We will get the thinking thing. Uh. Women are the movement too. I love it. We are anonymous too. Yeah, that's true. We are many, and we are the proud. We are the few. We are the Marines. I think that's it. I have no clue. But anyway, it's great. It is great to have friends that are with us, ladies and gentlemen. The Patriot Guard, Last Defense, the full version. Okay, that's it. That's what the version is. We are anonymous. We we are legend. We do not forgive, and we not we do not forget. Expect us. Thank you. I'm sorry that I screwed that up. It's not the words. It's the <laughs> intent. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, I did very good. I, FYI, hey, if you go back to this broadcast. If people are listening to that podcast, I think I did very good with the with the words. I messed up the words, but you know what? That is true. We can take a stand. We can take a stand against the government. We can. But but we got to do it peacefully. We are not those we are not it is what's in your heart. We are not we can we can take we cannot take the government, but if we take it by force, we they will use force. But if we take it one step at a time, working with our government, working with the United States, if we work together, we can make a difference. On May fifteenth, or May fifteenth, the the government the there's going to be a large protest rally, and. I cannot wait. It's going to be real, real, real.
ladies and gentlemen. And that's coming from uh, from me. Ladies and gentlemen, let's finish the Patriot God last defense and we'll be right and we'll be here. I can't I can't shut my uh my microphone off. So you're gonna hear the same thing what I'm hearing. Ladies and gentlemen, let's finish the Patriot God last defense for version. And we will be back with We Are Anonymous 2. And if you want to call into the show, go right ahead. The Skype lines are open. Distance yourself from evil. Stand up for yourself preferably and distance yourself from evil. Amen. On that note, let's do it. In death, the respectful, ceremonial, and precise nature of a military funeral is a powerful statement and a living testimony to those who have lost so much. It is the reverent and moving act of respect that pays tribute to the fallen and honors the ultimate sacrifice a warrior can give. His birthday being on the 27th was just almost a, a calling that he, that was the day we were going to bury him too. I thought it was kind of neat that on his 27th birthday we would honor his and celebrate his life as well as say goodbye. Hope to see you. Imagine if you can, however, in the midst of such unbearable grief, in the middle of their deepest sorrow and struggling to cope with their loss, they receive word that someone's planning to pick at the funeral of their son and even make their day worse. My casualty affairs officer had pulled me aside um, as soon as I landed and he said there's a chance that there will be some protesters at Brennan's funeral. In Kansas, there is a radical and extremely misguided group of fanatics that twist a Bible full of hopes for their own demented purpose. They travel to the funerals of our war fallen, our American heroes, proselytizing their perverted and twisted truth. These protesters use the backdrop of the broken and the service of those who sacrificed everything Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're, like I said before, when a not, when we are anonymous two comes into this thing, we will we will break in. We, I don't care what we do, and here it is, ladies and gentlemen. Here is what we are anonymous two said, and no, oh, please let me. Uh, okay, here it is. It's not the words; it's the intent. It is what is in your heart. Stand up for yourself, peacefully. Distance yourself from evil. If someone is not positively supporting you then they are against you wake up sheepies the government is taking away our freedom on a daily basis they are posting you they are poisoning you with chemicals being sprayed in in the air it is true ladies and gentlemen i'm not kidding you chemical trails ladies and gentlemen if you don't believe me if you don't believe me then you know what Good luck, but you know what? You gotta stop. You gotta stop. You gotta stop. Seafood. I'm. I'm sorry. I hate seafood, and I listen to the we are not the seafood thing. It is interesting. I got that is interesting. I have to admit, they did an awesome job. But if you wanna go to we are anonymous to go right ahead. They are doing an awesome job. They are a 30-minute show, but they are doing an awesome job. Do you like seafood? Yes or no? It's a 4 or 5-minute clip. Go right ahead. They are they are putting uh, toxins in the water. And food fluoride was first used as a rat poison, expertine, and diet soda turns to f- formulate high at 98 degrees. What is your bodily temperature, hum? Oh, wait a minute. 98 degrees? I thought that was uh, normal, right? Okay, 98 degrees. Okay, somebody help me with the temperature here. Because I, I suck at temperature. Okay, 98 degrees is... Yeah, 98 degrees is is normal from for your state of view. And I have no clue what my temperature is. But I can tell you this. Uh, I'm in... I'm in my room and it is hot as hell in my room right now. It, it, I'm not kidding you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, fuss. F is a global event. It is all in disaster and will affect the entire world. Ladies and gentlemen, what they're talking about is 
is talking about the chemical trail reports and seafood is radioactive. I'm, hello, why do you think I don't eat seafood anymore? I hate seafood. I never, I never liked it. I never will. I'm sorry. I hate seafood. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, we'll be right back on the Andy Bond show. Holy cow, we have a lot of stuff here, ladies and gentlemen. We anonymous two are going like not a mile. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what? It's a 405 club. Let's play. Do you like seafood? Here it goes, ladies and gentlemen. Let's rock and roll. This is from a not a we are anonymous two. Let's rock and roll. A Canadian high school student named Gwen Delacruz never imagined that her school science project would make headlines all over the world. But that is precisely what has happened. Using a $600 Skyger counter purchased by her father, Delacruz measured seafood bought at local grocery stores for radioactive contamination. What she discovered was absolutely stunning. Much of the seafood, particularly the products that were made in China, tested very high for radiation. So is this being caused by nuclear radiation from Fukushima? Is the seafood that Focus, you okay. gives cancer and other diseases? Okay, uh, Fukushima, that's what I wanted to say, and 98.6 is normal. Okay, so that's interesting. Uh... Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's finish. We are anonymous too with the Do You Like Seafood? Let's hit it. The American people deserve the truth, but the U.S. and Canadian governments are not even testing imported seafood for radiation. What the fuck? To say that this is deeply troubling would be a massive understatement. In fact, what prompted Dela Cruz to conduct her science project? was the fact that the Canadian government stopped testing imported seafood for radiation in 2012. Alberta high school student Dela Cruz loves sushi, but became concerned last summer after learning how little food inspection actually takes place on some of its key ingredients. The Grey Chen student from Grand Prairie said she was shocked to discover that in the wake of the 2011 Fukushima nuclear disaster in Japan, the Canadian Food Inspection Agency stopped testing imported foods for radiation in 2012. And what should be a major red flag for authorities is the fact that the seafood with the highest radiation is coming from China. Dela Cruz studied a variety of seafoods, particularly seaweeds, as part of an award-winning science project. Some of the kelp that I found was higher than what the International Atomic Energy Agency sets as radioactive contamination. Dela Cruz said the samples that lit up the most were products from China that she bought in local grocery stores. It is inexcusable that the Canadian government is not testing this seafood. It isn't as if they don't even know that it is radioactive. Back in 2012, the Vancouver Sun reported that cesium-137 was being found in a very high percentage of the fish that Japan was selling to Canada. 73% of the mackerel, 91% of the halibut, 92% of the sardines, 93% of the tuna and eel. 94% of the cod and anchovies, 100% of the car, seaweed, shark and monkfish. So why was radiation testing for seafood shut down in Canada in 2012? Someone out there needs to answer some very hard questions. If Canada is getting radioactive seafood, so is the United States. Wake up. Wake the fuck up. Stop eating seafood. Research this information yourself. Stop being cattle led to slaughter. Stop being stupid. The government is counting on you to be stupid fucks. Wake the fuck up. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. 
we do not forget. Expect us. Ladies and gentlemen, that's right. That's right. We got... You're right. That's right. We got to stand up. Ladies and gentlemen, uh this is uh this is really what what is you got to wake up. Well, cool cool cool. We got to wake up. Wake up, wake up. Stinking wake up people. I'm gonna play this Patriot Guard. I'm gonna play Anonymous one more time, okay? I'm gonna play this Africa Seymour one more time. But let's finish this Westboro Baptist Church. Uh, let's finish this Patriot Guard and then we will go to this Anonymous. So basically, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, if you wanna wanna say anything to this thing, it, we have. It's time to rock and roll. Pull my. Finger has a very good message on floor on oh my gosh Ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna be here for a while. So on that note Let's finish this movie the last defense and then we are going to anonymous Then we're gonna go to pull my finger and then I don't know where we're gonna go from here But ladies and gentlemen here it is the rest of the patriotic guard the last defense hit it for their message Hate. Everything I stood for, they were coming against. Everything this young man stood for and gave his life for, <laughs> they, they mocked. It was another surreal moment of who would protest a funeral. It was really upsetting to know that someone would want to come and disrupt our t our special time to say goodbye to our son, who was fighting so that they could have the freedom to come and, and pick it. I knew I wasn't going to probably go out there and start busting some heads, but I was going to do everything I could to make sure that that didn't happen. And I could see across the way uh, a few of the people with their signs, and I just down the street, I, I heard the sound. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and girls, yeah, that's right. My name is Annie Bond. We are from the from Spring of Summer News. We, the Patriot God is coming. Repeat, the Patriot God is coming. Here. It was just absolutely wonderful to see them ride up on their motorcycles with their flags. I've seen a lot of great things. I can tell you this is right up there because on their faces was the look of, we'll take care of it. We've got this thing covered. And they did. Uh, I probably would have gone to jail at night. I don't know what I would have done, but it wouldn't have been good. You, you want to go and you want to go hit them. Or do something violent to them but at the same time you know you can't you know that it's the antithesis of what we're supposed to do you know they're out dying so that we can enjoy what we're doing at home you know and, and the least we can do is be there for the families everything these guys stood for was that this young man in, in this case that day brennan gibson was going to be treated and was going to be honored in the way that he should, and there would be no interruptions. The Patriot Guard writers were formed in response to that to shield the family from these people, shield them physically with our bodies and our flags. If they get too loud, fire up a couple motorcycles, shuts them right down. Now, obviously, that's the way to do it. And what that is is a, it's a very powerful thing to do, to nullify idiots like that. These rough and even tougher-looking guardians <laughs> come from every walk of life imaginable. With over 186,000 members nationwide and climbing, they are motivated by a sense of fairness and hell-bent on ensuring that those who have paid the ultimate price of freedom receive the funeral and respect they deserve. Uh, we've been out here when it's been below freezing. We've been out here in the pouring rain, uh, the snow, the sleet, uh, wind blowing. We feel that it's the least that we can do for what they've paid. To have an organization like this there for families of fallen service people is a godsend. If there's a little bit of a way that I can help to give back, 
uh, part of what they've lost, just even though it's very minor compared to what they're giving up. Um, I jump at the chance. Uh, even though I've done 250 or 300 of these, each one is different. Each family is different. Each setting is different. You know, we all we all feel it. I feel very honored to be a part of this of this organization. It's for me, it's very cathartic. We're not a political organization in any way. When, and when we get together, we're all Americans, and we're all here for the same purpose, and that is to honor the fallen hero. Some within their ranks have never served a day in the military. Some join the group because of a first-hand experience they've had with a group at a funeral for their family member. And some, like Nick Kindler, a veteran of the Vietnam War. Ladies and gentlemen, we gotta stop this because I am, I am literally gonna start crying. So, I'm gonna play Anonymous, and then let's go back to the Patriot Guard before I start crying. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. Fasima, our World Threat Anonymous. Take it away. spike and mutated wildlife washes ashore government and media promote delusion radiation hot spots are popping up around the United States thousands of percentages higher than background radiation mutated wildlife is being found dead on the same West Coast beaches where increased radiation levels have been documented by independent researchers <laughs> and the Fukushima Tepco plant workers have been caught using duct tape to fix their nuclear equipment but according to both the Japanese and United States governments, these events mean absolutely nothing. In fact, you must be a conspiracy theorist if you fail to believe the official story that it was likely red-painted utensils that led to a spike in documented radiation levels along the California coast. Yes, the government actually offered this up as an official answer. And you must absolutely be a conspiracy theorist if you have a gall to actually look back to late 2011 when researchers presented their findings regarding the impending wave of Fukushima radiation that was already being recorded within the country. Information going back to 2011 shows that scientists were already concerned about an increase in radiation levels and the overall fallout from the dilapidated Fukushima plant. We can't even go back to the declaration by scientist Marco Caldofen of the Worcester Polytechnic Institute that radioactive hot particles had been found at two out of the three radiation monitoring stations in Boston. As you are likely aware, hot particles are microscopic pieces of radioactive material that can absolutely wreak havoc on your body via the deliverance of concentrated radiation. And these particles, according to Caldofen, were already been found in Boston as far back as 2011. Now enter a new flurry of stories that have seemingly been popping up one after another as radiation levels are continually being monitored around the nation, namely the West Coast where the bulk of Fukushima-linked scenarios have been documented. In what sounds like an apocalyptic plot for the latest thriller film, we have mutated whales now washing up dead on the West Coast in the first ever documented case of conjoined gray whale caps. We even have elevated radiation readings as far away as St. Louis, Missouri. Sorry. Coincidentally, of course, this is happening at the same time that radiation hotspots, exceeding a 1,400% increase over normal levels, are being reported by researchers. 
It's even happening at the same time that similar 500% increases have been disregarded by government officials who admit they have no idea what's going on, but fervently deny any connection to Fukushima in any capacity whatsoever. In fact, that has always been the mantra of these government health officials, we have no idea what's really going on, but it's definitely not Fukushima. Because just as the Japanese government has assured its citizens that Fukushima is perfectly safe and poses no real threat to human health, while secretly reviewing studies that reveal the plant released massively more radiation and admitted and led to 78% of the radioactive waste being dumped into the Pacific Ocean, the United States government would much rather silently purchase 14 million doses of potassium iodide than tell you that there may be some cause for concern. While the spread of radiation to the west coast of North America was casually acknowledged, the early press reports quoting diplomatic sources stated that only tiny amounts of radioactive particles have arrived in California but do not pose a threat to human health. According to the news agencies, the unnamed sources have access to data from a network of measuring stations run by the United Nations Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty Organization. Greg Jachko, chair of the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission, told White House reporters that his experts don't see any concern from radiation levels that could be harmful here in the United States or any of the U.S. territories. A map of citizens measured radiation levels shows radioactivity is distributed in a complex pattern reflecting the mountainous terrain and the shifting winds across the broad area of Japan, north of Tokyo, which is in the center of the bottom of the map. While most of the automotive industry is in central Japan, Nissan's engine factory in Ibaki City is 42 kilometers from the Fukushima Daiki plant. Is the Nissan workforce affected? Is the engine plant contaminated? The plant is within about 10 to 20 kilometers of the government's evacuation zone, from which some 200,000 people were evacuated. The very core of the Fukushima disaster timeline that has been regurgitated by the mainstream media and government agencies alike was almost exclusively based on information provided by plant operator TEPCO, a company that is now on record as having lied to the population of the world in a major way. And there were no signs they would ever tell the truth unless forced to. It wasn't until an independent investigation revealed the actual levels of radiation released from the plant around two and a half times more than TEPCO would even admit that TEPCO was forced to go on record and say that the radiation levels they released were indeed much lower than reality. However, the independent investigation into Fukushima radiation levels not only exposed the lies by TEPCO regarding the radiation explosion at the plant, but it also found that around 78% of the cesium-137 released by the plant was funneling into the Pacific Ocean. The plant now states that the three reactor meltdowns at the Fukushima Daiki plant released about 900,000 terabek worlds of radioactive substances. About 20% fell on Japanese land, 2% somewhere on land, outside the country, and a whopping 78% remainder is believed to have entered the Pacific Ocean. At the very least, the Japanese and United States governments should be preparing citizens for what scientists say could last thousands of years as Fukushima nightmare. And that begins with admitting that the threat is real. Because, unless we really prepare ourselves and work together as a planet to truly fix the Fukushima plant and ensure that the 1,400 plus rods do not cause yet another massive meltdown, as experts say they likely will during transfer, if so, we really will be facing a radioactive nightmare of epic proportions. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us. Sorry. Yeah, park card. Mm. Okay. That was cool. I'm sorry. You gotta. Hey, okay. If you don't believe. We are anonymous too, and anonymous, uh, why don't you listen to this one? Because, if you don't listen, if you don't know this one, then you're screwed. It was right there in front of me, and I still couldn't believe it. 
Watching TV last weekend, I saw an advertisement for a new product from Danon, bottled water for kids called Fluoride to Go. The pitch? Why give your child soda full of sugar? Instead offer them Dan and Fluoride to Go, a convenient, satisfying way to help your child build strong teeth. So now Dan and offers you a choice, you can give the kids sodas with all the added sugar, or you can give them water with all the added toxins. What the fuck? Well, in case you didn't know it, fluoride is highly toxic. In fact, before fluoride was deemed a cavity fighter, it was used as insecticide and rat poison. It's true. Even more surprising is that when it comes to dental hygiene, fluoride actually does more harm than good. Are you listening to me? For decades the message that fluoride safely prevents tooth decay has been considered sacrosanct. This idea came from the same chemicals for better living era, that also told us that smoking cigarettes suit the throat. Now listen to this. Fluoride is a pollutant a byproduct of copper, iron and aluminum manufacturing. The problem of how to legally dispose of fluoride was solved in the 1930s, when a study funded by one of the country's largest aluminum companies concluded that fluoride prevented tooth decay. A successful public relations effort, helped along with some cooperative government cronies, resulted in the good news going out. This miracle chemical, when added to water supplies, will give everyone healthy teeth and brighter smiles. Got fluoride? But does fluoride actually prevent tooth decay? No. Don't believe a baby? Research it yourself. Don't give your baby fluoride. Don't give your kids fluoride. Stop ingesting water with fluoride. If I had teeth, I would not use toothpaste with fluoride. I am just a baby and I can see the stupidity of this. Why can't you? I should fart in your face. If I had teeth, Yeah, I found baby. I'm sorry. <clears throat> you hear from a baby, you hear from an anonymous, and, and we are anonymous too. What more proof do you need, ladies and gentlemen? So, in other words, wake up, you son of a bitch, and do something about it. Here's the rest of the Patriot Guard. Wants to make sure that the way that they were treated when they came home never happens to anyone again when we came back from vietnam we came back as pariahs i was never spit on but i was called a baby killer i was denounced uh this will never happen again as long as i'm alive as long as patriot guard is around this will never happen again recently the united states supreme court has announced that it will adjudicate the case of snyder versus felt this case speaks directly to the issue of First Amendment free speech and the responsibility of those using it. Our liberties as a nation are precious, powerful, and pure. Yet with those established freedoms comes a level of responsibility to the premise and promise for which they were established. May the liberty and justice for all, so pledged by all who recite our Pledge of Allegiance, be garnered and honored for those who willingly gave us the greatest gift of all. I've been on the other side of the flag line three times. It's a different feeling. And what we do makes a difference. There is a piece of property on a quiet ridge with a majestic view of Mount Hood and Mount St. Helens near Portland, Oregon. A strip of that ground belongs to Sergeant Brennan Gibson, interred with over a hundred thousand other warriors just like him. It is a national cemetery that honors and entombs the faithful and the fallen. Scripture teaches that love is never expressed with more power or clarity than when a person lays down their life for another. John and Linda, Karina and Ken, 
see the significant difference between words like lost and given. Unanimous in their conviction that American warriors are willingly giving and surrendering their life for the lives of others. They did not lose and no one took from them the life for which they freely gave. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, uh, I'm not on, on, we are not as two says, believe it or not, it is up to you. Believe and protect yourself and live or live or dis, disbelievable, disbelieve and continue being a stupid sheep and get cancer and die. The choice is yours. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's true. The choice is yours. You can be a stupid sheep, or you can exercise, you can run, you can eat healthy, you can, you can stop putting garbage in your body, or what, what people say before, or you, you do not have to listen to me. You don't even have to listen to the show, basically. The choice is yours. We're not going to make a choice for you. We promise you. We're not going to say, pick the right choice. Pick the right choice. You got to pick the right choice because I say so. No, we're not going to let you, we're not going to let you decide. You decide if you want to, if you want to live a healthy and happy life, then exercise and do your work and work out, have a free life, uh, buy water that's not have fluoride in it, uh, Crystal spring water, ice mountain water, that kind of water. I don't know what kind of water we have or not that is good for you. But exercise. Drink a lot of lots of fluids. And let's get... <laughs> yes, the Patriot Guard does rock, ladies and gentlemen. You just finished. We just finished the Patriot Guard last defense. Full version of it. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls... We'll be right back on the Andy Bond Show. This is the Chris. This is Krista Bursch again, remembering the fallen or something. I don't know, but we'll be right back. Oh wait a minute, we did this already. I love this song. Hit it. It's our time to take a stand. Remember who we are. Remember who we are. There's a call across this land. Remember who we are. Remember who we are. We
Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. And how are you doing? <laughs> I'm glad and read the labels. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. You gotta read the labels. Every some bottle of water has fluoride. Even some bottle of water has fluoride. Yes, you gotta read the labels, ladies and gentlemen. But you can protect yourself. Uh, my name is Andy Bond, and it is the coolest show ever. Calling to the show. I'm still waiting for people to call in. I know that people are like, what the heck are we calling in for? Why are, Why do you need to call in? You're doing a good job. Well, we just need your opinion here. And this is our first time doing a call in to the show a thon here. I'm joking. We don't have a thon. We're not 24 hours here. I wish we were. We're not raising money. Like I said, I wish we were. But call in to the show anytime you want. I am, I am looking forward to hearing from you. Uh... We are hanging out with ladies and gentlemen in my chat room. We are we have we are anonymous too. the Debbie Daily show Me, uh, I am I am in enjoying everything here. It is the best of the best here uh, This next song is if I die tomorrow military if I die tomorrow uh, This is for the troops who who have died and who are now in heaven and these are the troops please 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 come home and this next as soon as this song is over I'm gonna do I am American and this is really for everybody to stand up and take a stand because with you and me we can make a difference ladies and gentlemen here is if I die tomorrow and we'll be right back on the Andy Bond show
didn't think about anything in between. Our outpost got attacked that day. I was 20 feet from the door when the uh, RPG hit the wall near me, and it went through. And it was at, it was loud. Uh, I just remember just you know deafening you know blast. And, uh, and I thought it hit the tower that was uh, probably 30 feet from me. I looked up. You know I didn't see any smoke or anything. And um, then I kind of looked down, and uh, my whole right side was covered in blood. And my squad leader, I heard him yell, um, you know, Doc shit. And he grabbed my arm and, uh, and he squeezed around up high. And when he raised it, my hand hit me in the face. And, uh, and you know, and I kind of looked and then I grabbed my arm and then the ACUs had fallen off. And, uh, and I could see basically down my forearm um, because uh, both bones were blown out and then everything on the top. It was a uh, comparison, you know, it looked like a shark bite. We got the word that uh, our uh, snipers and our, our friendly forces were under some pretty heavy fire. We positioned ourselves in between our forces and the enemy fire. Um, and, you know, in the luxury of a 69-ton M1A1 Abrams tank, you could do that. Uh, you had a light-armored vehicle that came right in between us and the enemy forces. So I tried to get a hold of them for everything I could, uh, you know, yelling over the radio, Warlord, this is Tiger, Warlord, this is Tiger. And I couldn't raise him. So uh, I did uh, what the Marine training taught me to do, secondary means of communication. I popped up out of the top of the tank and uh, gave kind of a cutthroat signal to knock it down there. And, and it was about that time where I was struck with a single round through the arm, uh, entered uh, from my tricep through my bicep and into my chest. And it spun me around about 90 degrees. And I remember thinking, well, what was that? You know, it, it was an amazing impact. I stuck my right arm underneath my left armpit to kind of get that pressure point there and, and slow down the bleeding, and I, and I was. And I was trying to move my arm to get down inside the tank, and I didn't realize that, that my arm was shattered. We were on a dismounted patrol that night. Uh, one of our platoons uh, started getting shot at. Uh, we never found any IEDs in a field. They've always been on a path or a choke point, something that leads you into that place where they know you're going to have to get the ID if you walk in there. I remember feeling a lifting feeling, and uh, it went black, but I never, I didn't feel anything, couldn't hear anything, couldn't see anything, but uh, I could talk to myself, so uh, I said, um, I said, this is what death feels like, you can talk to yourself, but you can't see anything, I remember saying, that sucks, you know, I was like, I can't believe I'm dead. I would have died, I was shot behind you here by enemy sniper, it was very good, the Marines around me thought I was dead. Like Corman Grant came over and performed an emergency tracheotomy on me, cut my throat so I wouldn't drown in my own blood, put some tubes down my nose, and also performed rescue breathing because I was dying. He did that even though a sniper was still shooting at the Marines and all those around us. So it was complete disregard for his own safety. He saved my life. I had lost so much blood that they had to resuscitate me uh, on the OR table um, because the, uh, once they took me into surgery, um, they had. Once they released the tourniquets, it started bleeding out of control again. I wasn't hooked up to blood yet, and I lost so much that they had to resuscitate me and, you know, give me uh, the electric paddle or whatever, you know. And um, the surgeon, you know, they were doing stuff. And I was still, you know, kind of in and out of it. And she saw me playing with my hand, and she saw uh, these three fingers moving. Uh, my uh, middle finger, ring finger, and pinky. And um, it's controlled by the ulna nerve, and that's the only nerve in my arm that wasn't damaged at all. So I could still move it, even though, you know, pretty much the arm was gone, um, you know, you could cut it off with a pair of scissors. And my eyes started flipping open, and uh, started coming to you. I knew I hadn't been out that long, because there was still a lot of dust in the air, and uh, some of my soldiers were still on the ground trying to get up from the blast. And I remember coming to you this first, um, and I was yelling for help. Well, at first I was you know, screaming, because I couldn't believe it. You know, damn, I just lost my legs. It was pretty much like it just got cut right up from under me. I was laying in the crater. Uh, I could see my legs. I could see the bone. Uh, probably about six inches of the bone in my right leg sticking out. And I swallowed it. Yeah. When I was yelling out for help, he was like, who is that? And I was like, so quick. And he started crawling towards me. Um, and he was so shaking up, just trying to put a tourniquet on my leg. First, he asked me where my tourniquet was. We carried one in our iPad, which is our medical pouch uh, on our equipment, and then one in the pant leg of our, pocket, of our pants. And he's like, where's your, where's your tourniquet? And I was like, wherever my leg is. And I never felt any pain, and I wanted to watch everything. But I stayed awake the whole time. I uh, received a can of heart. I uh, landed there, and they got me off the, the bird, and they were talking to me. I remember being just like frantic, like covered in people. I sat up, and I was like, don't let me die. And then I went out. So as much as I tried to move my arm, the only thing that was moving was my elbow. And my arm was caught up on the top of the tank. 
and I thought, and I looked over and I, I looked at my loader and I said, I can't. So I went back over to try and fix my arm, trying to grab my arm, and as I grabbed my left arm with my right hand, another hand grabbed my arm. It kind of freaked me out at first. I thought, well, whose hand is that? And I followed the arm up and I looked. Thanks, Corporal Jared Moran. He had jumped out of the safety of the tank, onto the tank, in, in enemy fire, in a line of fire, and grabbed my arm to dislodge it. And I, within a matter of minutes, probably 20 to 30 minutes after I was struck by that bullet, I was getting on board a medevac helicopter and being rushed into my first surgery. I went to an aid station there, and then several hospitals in Iraq, and it's a long school in Germany, and then finally some Bethesda. Like and every stop of the way, a team, a team of military folks did exactly what they were supposed to do to save me. At any one of those places, I could have died, and no one would have fought with them because of my injury was you know, pretty catastrophic. Every time you get a chance to put a uniform on and be with these kids, I think it makes you want to be a better person and work that much harder. The medical community um, in the military right now, uh, particularly on the battlefield, is a compilation of all services and of all, all branches in that you've got Air Force, Army, Navy, Marines on the battlefield, as well as I suspect some Coast Guard. And then amongst those components, you have National Guard Reserve and active component units that um, have all mobilized. As an emergency physician in theater, uh, I found it to really be the best job an emergency physician could have. We're taking care of uh, men and women who are doing an extremely hard job they do it without complaining. So the medevac is the beginning of a pipeline where a uh, warrior is wounded in the field, medevac to a treatment facility, and then on to long school, and then all the way back to the state. That process used to take months. It was reduced to weeks. Now we've got it down to days. And I'm very, very proud to say that uh, I help provide care for wounded warriors, our nation's sons and daughters, that uh, defend this country so bravely. The general Marines are just short of incredible. I mean, these, we've had guys come in and they've got below the knee amputations and they're like, I'm, you know, just look at you and they'll say, I'm doing well, how are you doing? And that's, and that just still blows me away. So, thank God for the room. I worked in their ICU in the World 3 in Kandahar Hospital. Um, these, the, the six months I was there, and uh, only in the ICU, um, took care of, of all of our men who were um, blown up, shot at. Um, everything and anything. I can be the greatest people in the world. I can't believe how kind and polite they are. I can have their legs blown off and they're saying yes ma'am. Just blow my mind how great they are and how awesome they are. They're absolutely the, the greatest that we have here. Um, it was an honor to take care of them and uh, hopefully give them some comfort and hopefully help save their lives. I've had 39 surgeries. I had 36 from um, June 15, 2010 to uh, the end of September was the last one inpatient, 36. And then I've had three since, and I got one left. And then I think that's it. You know, the first surgeries, obviously, they did really keep my arm. You know, they're taking some stuff that works from other parts of my body and putting them in. They said it's basically like splicing wire, kind of. And then they had to figure out how to close it. Uh, like I was saying, you know, such a deep wound that they did the flap and, uh, you know, like I said, they cut three sides, raised it up, and then sewed my arm to my side or whatever like this. And it was like that for 30 days. The first two weeks, 10 days, two weeks, blood flowed with my chest still, the skin. And then after about two weeks, it switched. It basically started grabbing on. And like if I raise my wrist, kind of, you can see it moving. There's actually like muscle underneath there now. I came back in 2005. I was hit in February of 05. And I came back uh, March of 05. And I realized that there was something wrong with the right side of my head and my, my eye. So I went through about six surgeries. And then finally, November of 05, they had no choice but to remove the right eyeball. I never thought about my personal freedom the way I thought about it after I first got wounded. And you talk about freedom to go to the bathroom, freedom to go to the store. I mean, freedom just to do things you, that you used to be able to do. Everybody was gone, um, you know, uh, fairly late in the night. And um, you know, your hospital was pretty quiet around that time. The only person with me was my wife, who was with me for, you know, ever. Uh, she was 
sleeping in the chair beside me for the first four weeks of surgeries, and uh, God bless her. Uh, but she was there, and she was sitting in the chair beside me, and all I can remember thinking was, that's serious. I won't need my golf clubs anymore. And I thought to myself, whoa, what else? What else can't I do now? So now I can't rotate. I can rotate at the shoulder, but like I can't, like if you wanted to hand me something, you know, I can't do any of that. And then, you know, just from the anatomy of my arm now, you know, my wrist, I can't raise it back. You know, just the nerve damage and stuff to my uh, fingers, you know, this is my fist. I can't bend. The last surgery, they cut the muscle on this side of my palm out right there. So now I can't open my pinky, but, uh, it draws my thumb out to where I can, you know, grab stuff now more uh, or easier. So they're just trying to make it now. It's just about it getting as functional as possible. I think one thing with this is you can you can let yourself fall into a trap of, you know, pity with these kind of injuries because they're so debilitating. If you don't want to push yourself to get better, you're not going to get better. My goal that I put out is I want to get independent by the end of December being able to walk, being able to take care of myself. My first goal uh, is it's kind of it's really, really sentimental and it, it, it kind of hits me in the heart a lot. And I mean, just like playing with my son, I know once he gets older, it's going to be hard for me to move around on the floor a lot and kind of follow him around. But the main thing right now is actually carrying him. Um, we got this, uh, what is it, baby born jarn thing? It's a little uh, carrier. Um, right now, what we do in therapy is uh, we put weights in it to uh, kind of resemble the weight of my son right now. And I walk around. We work on my balance because the weight score is going to pull me for it. But if I learn how to uh, counterbalance that, then eventually I can be able to put my son in and carry him. I know that I would not have had several cover as I have without diet there. It's just. Knowing, even when I was in a coma, even when I couldn't move, but knowing that she was there, and also my other family members too, because I didn't close by, knowing that they were there just really helped me remain calm and know that I'm going to get better. I have people who love me around me. One thing I can tell you, Wounded Warriors is the road ahead is long, the recovery is not quick, but there's a whole bunch of people in your corner, whether you know it or not. And you, you have an obligation to yourself to get the help you need. People come into my, uh, into my room, you know, Wounded Warrior Project, and, and their partnership with Disabled Sports USA, and said, hey, we're going we're gonna to get you out, we're going to get you golfing again. And I thought, yeah, um, have you seen my arm? Uh, you know, just, I have one arm, really, basically. And they said, no, 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 you don't have one arm. We have guys that have one arm. We have guys that have one leg. We have guys that have no legs. They're out there. We got this. And I thought, oh, I mean, maybe if they can do it, I'll try it. And so here I am six years later, that that, that one, one time, that one event, that one partnership, <laughs> that one organization that got me out there to try it changed my life. And one of the plastic surgeons that helped on one of the surgeries was like, yeah, you know, we'll do some plastic surgery and we'll, we'll fix some of those up. And I was like, wow. He's like, you know, that way they don't show up. I was like, you're crazy. I was like, I don't want them to show up. You know, I was like, this, I was like, this is paid for and full. Because the worst is over, the best is yet to come. It's understanding this new normal, it's accepting this new normal, and not as a curse or something or a punishment or something bad has happened to you, but it's really as an obstacle in life that that you've got to overcome. People ask, you know, how do you, how can you come to work and see this every day? And 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 the answer is, it's honestly, it's very easy. And part of it is because people make progress every single day. The soldier ride was a, a good point for me because it showed me where I was physically and not only that but emotionally because I got to go to the uh, ground zero to the freedom child and that's something I've always wanted to do and it made me think about where I really am in my therapy and uh, seeing that I'm riding with other marines I'm interacting with other marines and I don't have a problem with it I don't I don't um I feel comfortable I feel normal I could have been all done I mean I almost died there I was minutes away from dying that night I feel like I've been handed a baton and I have to take that and run with it. And how am I doing that? I can talk about it. I'm okay talking about what's happening. 
So my goal, my, my endeavor in life is to, is to be a, a good father, a good husband, and use what I've been given, and I truly think that, boy, I, he was a blessing, uh, to use that. And, and however I can to help those who come after me. One of the big things we learn in the military is whatever you do, you make it better for the guys behind you. And, and I, I'm doing that. I went through three years of depression of not doing anything. And I just made a promise to myself when I came out of the depression to start working with you. Hello, how are you doing? Just a minute. Let me shut your uh, thing off, okay? All right. Hey, Grandpa Al, how are you doing? Just a minute here. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I have a special guest on today. And this is this is the truly truly honor of me because he is he is a patriot he is the coolest guy ever and he supports the Women warriors project ladies and gentlemen give it up for grandpa al al how are you doing my friend i'm doing pretty good um i just uh my uh, co-host uh ed stowe the uh, uh southern cowboy is uh definitely uh trying to heal from his battery ass wounds from yesterday and uh, uh, I feel pretty good um, doing whatever I can for the Wounded Warriors Project. We have a telethon coming up on uh, uh, Sunday night from uh, 10 p.m., uh, going 24 hours. And my time slot would be from, uh, four, from 4 to 7 a.m. in the morning. Uh, during the time this is um we well, have a whole bunch we have a whole list of uh hosts going through it so well we're going to be doing this pretty good oh uh, cool if you need any help at all please let me know because i i do ha have you ever heard of the speaker seven news team oh yes i do that's that's my news team cool so if you ever if you need help just let me know because i would do a report on it trust me Always a pleasure to have you with us. You know, everything that you can do is uh, a blessing. Ladies and gentlemen, let me let me tell you this firsthand. I know what the Wounded Warrior Project is. Trust me, I know it because my grandpa served in uh, served in the war and was in a uh, Wisconsin uh, Wisconsin Kings Memorial Hospital, and he died on July twenty first, two thousand one. And I was the one that held his hand when he died. And trust me, when I say I know what people go through when when a soldier dies. Trust me. I I don't want to feel that pain again because it's so sad. It is so sad because Oh, I'm sorry, Grandpa. Oh, I'm talking. Oh, man. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. That, that's okay. You know what? The, telling your side of the story brings out uh, everybody's uh, information uh on how you feel. And your uh, emotional status when you're doing this. Well, uh, it, it, 21 seconds, so uh, I'm going to be going live too, and then this way we can both go live together. How's that? It would be my honor. Well, ladies and gentlemen, both and girls, uh, you're going live in 20 seconds? 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Test, test, test. And we are live with Andy Bong on my side. And, uh, what do you say, Andy? Hey, how are you doing, everybody? My name is Andy Bond, and it is time to support the Wooden Warriors Project. This is a great program, and I am honored. No, actually, let me, let me rephrase that. I am so blessed that people, that I, I love this because people are standing up. I haven't been so proud of Spreaker in a long time. I haven't been so proud of people because people are supporting this Wooden Warriors project. You get a good project in hand and people will will go, people will flood the chance to help. Is that correct? Oh, definitely. Uh, well, we all know that Jay Sands um, put a goal of $500 uh, for the fundraiser that we have. And uh, uh, we passed that. It's seven hundred and eight dollars and thirty three cents, and Jay Sands will definitely be shaving his stash on video and posting it soon. So say goodbye, say goodbye to the mustache. Say goodbye to the Jay Sands. Sorry. Oh, that's all right. Hey, see.
Uh, I want part of that mustache to fill in the bald spot on my head. But oh, can, that much. can you tell me? I need the uh, I need the mustache for 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 some uh, some bomb people here. Well, that's me, man. I'm about yes, I need the mustache because from from Wisconsin, from from Wisconsin, Falls, Wisconsin, I can see the bomb spot and it's blinding. <laughs> joking, joking, joking. I'm sorry. Well. We got Amanda B in our. I know Amanda B. Holy cow, he she's been, she's been on shows like Norma Mao here. He's she's on she's on shows like Hey, how are you doing, everybody? Whoa, and she doesn't have her her own show. We need to get her her own show, literally. Oh, Amanda, come call in to us, darling. Amanda B. Why don't you call in and say hi to us? Because you know what. We're waiting. We are here. We will find you and we will call you. Trust me, we're not anonymous, but we're dang close to them. Yeah, we're just dangerous, but we're, uh, don't, we're not saying anything about that right <laughs> We're not dangerous. We don't bite. I don't know about Grandpa Al. I don't bite. Uh, I take off my teeth with gum, but uh, we're not going to go there either. <laughs> okay. Ladies and gentlemen, let me let me uh, let me say hi to everybody in my chat room here. We have anonymous. We have we are anonymous too here. We have Debbie Daly was in my chat room, stopping by, listening to my show in Dallas, Texas. So hallelujah! It's a beautiful day in o in Wisconsin. Finally. Oh yeah, definitely. Finally, how long have we waited here? Uh, all winter. <laughs> yes. Uh it was like, I, I swear to God, if we had a snowstorm, people would be be having shotguns and shooting the, and going to the Mother Nature people. Uh, yeah, well, we, uh, we can't blame the weather people themselves. We're just going to take a look up, uh, put our hands together, and says, hey, God, uh, thank you for using the right shampoo. I don't see any snow on the ground. Yeah. Uh, I have, uh, oh, where my hook come at? You have what? Oh, never mind. Sorry, I. Never mind. Sorry, I, I'm I, because when you see the typing, you have one of these orange, those yellow dots on Skype, and it's bothering you because you. I swear to God, someone is calling you up. Yeah. And typing, and so it. I had to realize that I. You added me to the cost, so that was funny. Anyway, uh. Anyway, we're talking about all kinds of stuff on my show. We're talking about the Wounded Warriors Project. We're talking about the Patriotic Guard that I just did a few hours ago. Cool. Those guys are cool, those Patriotic Guards. What do you think? Uh, yeah, but everybody that's been through, um, through uh, the, uh, uh, the military and everything else, you know, they have a special place in my heart because I was in the military and uh, I've got a bullets lodged in my back, but uh, I, I, I never found the reason to take it out. It's, uh, it's my badge of honor, I should say. Interesting. But, uh, you have a bullet in, in the back of your body? Yeah. yeah and well, why, do, why don't you take it out and put it on, a, do a necklace? Too close to a nerve that uh, yeah, either way could... Uh, if you move it, it's like a, a, a piece of shrapnel that uh, has a one sharp edge. And so far, it's been away from a nerve that would uh, probably paralyze me for life. Oh. But I'm trying. I, I, I'm living with it. And I'm any, any way that possibly can happen uh, to paralyze me, you know what? I did for my country. That's the way I look at it. This is, this is my life, and I'm living it to the fullest now. And so far... Uh, I'm 56 years old, and it hasn't bothered me in 30 some odd years, so I'm not worried about it. So, how is the? How is the? Have you heard any word on the, on the Kenosha, Wisconsin casino that they're going to be putting out pod rack something? Oh uh, yeah. So, well, according to our uh, sources with the, uh, with that uh, casino, it's the governor's. Uh, uh, He's still up in arms, thinking about it, looking over all the paperwork, making sure it's not going to be a scam like uh, people say that the Menominee Indians are uh, known for, the ones that are from Florida trying to build it here. So they're keeping a real close eye on things. They're getting all the information that they can. 
and uh, they don't want any um, uh, bad people ties, you could say. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, a couple of uh, bad people that you can bitch slap them later, but um, yeah, it, it's everything that's going to uh, be going whatever uh, with this casino. I'm praying to God it does work because. Uh, then there's going to be a lot more work out there for the people around this area. They don't have to travel all the way to Milwaukee to go into uh, the Potawatomi bingo uh -huh. there. I'm praying to I'm praying to God too because the the I was talking to a uh, a sheriff person that works for the works works for Menominee uh, Men, the Indian tribe the police tribe, and they were asking me, Hey Andy. When when the hotel does go up, would you want to take pictures for your company? And I said, of course. Some uh, hey, give me when that thing goes up, uh, send me a uh, send me a police escort and let's go to Kenosha, Wisconsin, okay? And let me take some pictures. Uh, well, the day you come, you, the day you come here, for, uh, I'll invite you over and we'll get together in my home uh, at the dinner table with. Uh, my uh, microphones and everything else. We'll do a live show then. Oh, cool! I cannot wait. I hope I I hope I can go to Kenosha, Wisconsin. That would be cool because I'm praying to God that they will call me up saying, "Hey, Andy." Yeah, uh, this is the this is a guy from the police department. Uh, do you want to go to Kenosha, Wisconsin, and take the pictures of the casino? And I'll be like, "Hell yeah!" <laughs> you just have to give me a day police escort. Probably uh, uh, find an outlet uh, around that area and do the show right there. That would be neat. Oh, yeah. Go. Uh, hey, uh, call you off on Skype. Hey, good man. Why don't you come to the casino, okay? I'm in the penthouse suite. Oh, that would work. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, man. That would just be nice. But you know what? If they do give me a call up and they, they say, hey, and you want to take pictures of the of the casino and I'm like of course I will hello how many people how, how many production companies says that you get pitch you take pictures of a casino uh not many unless you're invited yes so if I'm invited I will be happy to they are the Green Bay Police Department and the Menominee Police Department is like, do you take pictures of everything? And I said, of course. If you want to take pictures, if you want me to take pictures of a casino, go right ahead. Cool. Well, we got, uh, we have Apocalypse in the chat room on my side. Hey, Apocalypse. Apocalypse, Apocalypse, Apocalypse. What is up, my friend? How are you doing? He's sitting there listening to us. This is what a bunch of fools. <laughs> no, uh... He wouldn't do that. He, he's, a, he's one of those better guys that, uh, uh, actually, he's a hugger. And you know what? It is a wonderful thing that people get to hug all over the place. And it, it gives a great feeling no matter where you go. It's just, why would people say, oh, man, a guy's hugging another guy. What's wrong with him? It's just, hey, you hug your family the way you do, and every stranger that you come oh, to oh, don't worry. Hey, 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 uh, you've got to realize that, you know what, there is people that think that, that if you hug a man, you're gay. Uh, those are the people that should be <laughs> a couple of times. But... I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you got to realize that people think that you're gay if you hug somebody. Oh, uh, yeah. Some people do think that, uh, that's, they're unfortunate uh mental attitude going but uh we definitely say hey you, you want to get feeling good you, you hug uh, your friend yeah you, you hug your brother your sister your mom your dad because you know what family is family and friends do become family once you get to know them uh-huh well ladies and gentlemen boys and girls it's been a wonderful day i am at home it is now 3 58 p.m in the wisconsin area i don't know oh wait a minute we're in the same time zone duh yeah. sorry i think i i have to realize that you're in kenosha wisconsin and i'm in o'connor how far is kenosha wisconsin from o'connor falls anyway uh, I believe about a three-hour drive. Yeah, shoot. I could, yeah. uh, I, I could take my car and I could be there by six o'clock. 
Well, you figure I'm right alongside uh, the uh, Illinois border, starting at I-94 and going straight up to uh, 43. That'll uh, go right by uh, uh, Green Bay. Yeah, I know where Green Bay is. That is you're by the Illinois border. Yeah, I, like about six blocks away from it. Oh my God! Uh, remind me not to. Uh, remind me if I ever rob a bank to come to you, so I can hide out and then make my escape to the Illinois border. Oh, cool! <laughs> uh, Apocalypse says uh, you guys should get to meet up. I don't think I know anyone from uh, Spreaker near Phoenix. Guess what? We're, we'll come down by you. Oh, Bye. trust me. Don't worry about it. Uh, we can take a one of these days. We will get a rope. We will get a van. We get a bus, and we're heading down to Phoenix, Arizona, baby. Oh, I wouldn't mind that. Hey, me either. Hello. Give me a bus, pick you up, and then go pick you up, then go straight down to Phoenix, Arizona. That's no sweat. I love. I I could go for a vacation. How about you? Yeah, I could go to a vacation. I'd go to uh uh. Uh, pick up a couple of uh, chicky boos down at uh, Vegas in any day. Uh, oh, no yeah. Hello, hot girls. Uh, <laughs> and go to and come go to Apocalypse saying, hey, Apocalypse, check out these girls. <laughs> <laughs> you want some fun bags? Here they are. <laughs> but you got to realize that uh, Las Vegas is a big prostitution ring, so I, we probably have to pay for those girls' crap. Uh, do they take credit cards? I hear they got a couple of slots handy. <laughs> so. Run away from the pimps, quick! <laughs> Drive! Okay! Definitely, definitely. So. Oh my gosh, we're just talking. <laughs> How did we get on? We were talking about the move of only as fast as we got on to bunny trails here. How the heck does that work? Uh... Uh, have you had your Kool-Aid today? You I had my dime on a dew today, okay? Hey, you got a sh you got a sugar high roll in there, Ooh. buddy. Yes, I am. I am, uh, note to self, don't ever trust me with sugar, okay? Ah, oh, perfect. I okay. could drive very, very fast right now. <laughs> Apocalypse says, uh, it's perfect weather there, uh, snowless. Yeah, um, my six, my uh, six-year-old, seven-year-old uh, granddaughter says, uh, every time it snows, grant the uh, good Lord for God is uh, is uh, dandruff shampoo. So I believe that in you know in her own sweet ways because uh, we all need to keep that little uh, person inside of us too to see the wonders of what young people see now oh, yeah. as long as they don't go learning the uh, F-bomb, which is uh, a shame. When they oh learn man, that. okay seriously, what is with our kids today? What is with the teachers teaching them? They will, did you know that in, in college, this is a true story, next year in, in a liberal university, they are talking, they're going to, you can take a course on Miley Cyrus. Say what? You can take a course on Miley Cyrus, how to act like Miley Cyrus. Literally, I'm not kidding you. Sociology or something. Uh, sociology, uh, something studying the brain or something like uh, like Criminal Minds does. If you ever watched the Criminal Minds, you can take a liberal college in New York City. Says you can take a course on how how Miley Cyrus acts. Seriously, I'm not kidding you. Okay, seriously, why would you take a course on Miley Cyrus? Learn to uh, twerk? I don't know. I know. Andy. Jonathan, what's up? How are you doing, everybody? My name is Andy Brown, and we are live from the Green Bay Studios with my co-host. And on, in from, live from the Kenosha, Wisconsin, of course. I don't know how we're doing this, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, okay, seriously, did I have to call your people to get you on my show? Uh, no, I called you, and I just patched you through the uh, speaker section on my side to my show. So. I'm glad that the people. Uh, I'm glad that we don't have any people involved because they would take for hours. Hey, I'm. I'm. I'm you know what? Uh, anytime that we have another caller coming in, you darn right. You just add it to it. You could add to your side, my side. We could have a whole bunch of people going. <laughs> oh yeah, we could. I could start another show as soon as I'm done with this one. 
I can start a three-hour show more and talking, and I can just type it up. What to talk about? <laughs> we can talk about everything. Oh yeah, just definitely. Right now, um, that right here at the Grandpa L. Kruska Radio Show, since everybody likes to say my name this way, that way, and the other, uh, definitely we have the Saturday's Wounded Warrior Salute, and this is also in prelude to the Wounded Warriors 24-hour. Uh, Stashathon is what I would call it. Uh, G. Sands uh, said he, at $500 raised for the Wounded Warriors project, he would shave his stash. And that day has definitely been posted. We have him, we have $708 in uh, the thing, so we surpassed that, and he will be shaving his stash. He was just getting him the courage to uh, post uh, the day he's going to do it that we're going to watch and live I, on a video. And that is that is going to be one of the uh, most thrilling days of his life because he's going to have to uh, put on a, a uh, Groucho Marx mustache after that because he's going to feel naked. And then all of a sudden you can just see this. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Annie Bond and welcome to the Spreaker News. My name is Annie Bond and we are live with Al, Gra uh, Grandpa Al. Grandpa Al, how are you doing today? Happy, happy, happy. Uh, happy. Are you, uh, okay, are you live on the Jay Sands show? Is Jay Sands shaving the mustache right now? Because we can't see, uh, can you, can I get an interview with Jay Sands as soon as the mustache is shaved off? I don't see why not. I'm not. I'm not on his show right now. But uh, uh, what you do is that you go into his chat room and you ask him. He says, "Hey, as soon as you get your stash shaved, I want an interview." Oh. And I don't say no for nobody <laughs> except for you because uh, you're the one who I want to interview. But you oh. know, just just like that, you know. Yeah. People people are gracious enough to do the things that uh, you would like to do. Um, like I, I've asked, uh, um, our mayor here in, uh, Kenosha that, uh, to have him on my radio show once and once to, uh, say what's going on with the, uh, Kenosha, uh, the, uh, ugh, the Menominee, uh, casino that people want to be building. You know, there's a lot of information out there that we are not getting because it's all between, the Menominee Indians and uh, our Governor Walker. Yeah, and what's going on? Seriously, I know that. Uh, I know that. I know that everybody wants to stay in the loop. But seriously, I know that Menominee Indians and I think all the tribes don't like the idea. I'm sorry, all the tribes are on it 100. percent I think I don't know. The last time I heard of it, the tri all the tribes. From the Oneida Casino to the Menominee Casino, people were on it. I don't know if all the tribes are on board, but you know what? I swear to God, it's going to be an uphill battle. I swear to God. The only two tribes that are against it is uh, the Potawatomi and the Ho-Chunk. Why the Ho-Chunk and the Potawatomi? Why? Because they're afraid that all their profits would be taken from the Kishona casino in uh, Kenosha because uh, most people that go from the Illinois border heads out to those two main casinos. So those two, the only reason that they are not on board with it is because they're afraid of losing money. Seriously? Sure. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, also losing uh, uh, because once they start losing money they have to cut back on workers and then that makes them more uh, vulnerable to people who like to cheat at the the games because there are different ways that you can cheat at the electronic games but it's getting harder and harder thank god to uh the upgraded technologies that's been happening i know but okay the two the two tribes but the rest of the tribes are on board why is that because uh, they welcome uh the competition because uh there's a lot of people out there that uh, are they're, uh, they're wonderful because we have the Menominee's uh, tribes that are up in the uh, <coughs> the northern UK of uh, Upper Peninsula of uh, Wisconsin, uh, and they want, you know, it's, it's all a share, share for uh, the Indian tribes and the families that uh, belong to uh, those sectors. It's a wonderful thing to have, especially when uh, 
there's a lot of people out there that cannot afford the long drive between uh, Kenosha and Milwaukee to go to there or uh, Madison. No. I have to get up at least uh, $80 for a round trip just to get from here to Madison so I can play the uh, penny slots. And that takes a lot of money out of me. So if we have one right here in Kenosha. I like the penny slots. Yeah, put in uh, five cents, five dollars, uh, play that for about two hours, and then I'm gone. Yeah, I love that. I would love to go to a lost. I've never been to a casino in my life before, and I can tell you that right now. And I would love to go to a Las Vegas casino. To uh, seriously, I would because that would be cool. I'm sorry. I would love to go to a casino. I'm sorry. I would love to pay those penny slots here. I would love to have someone teach me how to play Texas Hold'em and Blackjack at the slot machines. Well, you can actually do that here, here on uh, the internet. There's special games in Facebook and whatnot that you can actually do that. But I would love to have somebody, uh, because Indian, uh, I was, uh, have you ever heard of Gabriel Helixius? Uh, yes. And, uh, and that, uh, this one guy, because he, they were talk he was talking about Indians. And... How how the Indian casinos are nicer because when when they when you know that you're gonna lose they're gonna say okay okay it's time to stop now you're gonna lose all your money yeah at least they put a little effort into uh, helping you uh, keep away from that dirty day where you start losing everything yeah and I love it because you Indian people and I swear to God this is what gave you delicious it's Indian people are the hardworking people. And I have to agree, they are hardworking. They are, seriously. But you have a lot of other uh, ethnic groups that are definitely uh, hardworking as well. We can't ignore them as well. I know, but you know what? You don't... Yeah, it's funny because the, all the, Indian, the two Indian tribes that are not wanting to play ball is being, is being a stick in the mud because they don't want that. I don't get it. Mm. I well, don't... It's amazing. To each their own, my friend. Uh, you got to accept what things that you cannot change and change the things you can. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to... So what? How, so when does this uh, telethon start on Sunday? What time? 10 p.m. Eastern Time. And that's uh, from the... Uh, that's with Jay Sands and the, and the SandsNet Radio Network here on Spreaker. And uh, I'll be uh, definitely... Uh, uh, patching it through to my people uh, all over Facebook, Twitter, uh, Facebook, yeah, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, uh, SoundCloud. I've got uh, all those patched into my network for uh, broadcasting. So we, we, people can just sit back, relax, enjoy the show because uh, there is uh, Jay Sands. Uh, uh, matter of fact, I do have our little uh, schedule here. Okay, Sand shaves his stash for cash, live 24-hour <clears throat> marathon, to benefit the Wounded Warriors Project. The start time, Sunday, March 30th at 2014, from 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, is Jay Sands and the Sandsnet Radio Network. Monday, March 31st at 1 a.m. to 4 a.m. is Goofy Bone with the... 186 point deuce at 4 a.m. to 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's me, Grandpa Al, and the uh, what I say, uh, Grandpa Al's productions. Uh, I gotta keep on thinking about another thing to call. How about this, the, uh, ladies and gentlemen, live from Kenosha, Wisconsin? Here is yours, your host, the one, the only. Give it up for Grandpa Al. In the production, Grandpa Al's productions for you. How do you like that? Okay. I guess I'll get a new set. Hey, yeah, because I just used Andy's productions for you, get it, my company, but you can use it for you too, okay? Oh, I appreciate you, Ray. This is NN from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. on the 31st. Bobby Brown, WEJA Radio. Then 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., Ernie Abbott with WEJA Radio, 1 p.m. to 4 p.m., Matthew McFadden, Exact FM Radio Network, the 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. with Beep Bopper, Exact FM Radio Network, and ending with, Jay, on April 
Uh, well, ending uh, Tuesday, April 1st, from the 31st, 10 a.m. to 1 a.m., Jans, uh, J. Sands, the SandsNet Radio Network. These are all Eastern Standard Time, so uh, it, it's going to be fun. I'm, I'm going to be staying up all 24 hours just to make sure that I'm on every show uh, listening to it and also broadcasting from my own time slot. And everybody else is going to join me. It, it's it's a worthwhile thing for the Wounded Warriors Project and oh, whatever money that we get. Um, Jay Sands uh, reached the $500 goal, which is an awesome thing. Uh, he's going to shave his mustache. Uh, we have a problem with uh, uh, a battery explosion with our good friend, the Southern Cowboy, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, Edward Stoll, uh, Stoll, and uh, he was supposed to shave his uh, face and beard, uh, his head and his beard, uh, off with uh, the 750, but uh, we're going to excuse him for that because uh, he is definitely... Uh, in a lot of pain, and oh, he's a blessed individual. He's always been uh, there for everybody else, and we're sending our prayers and blessings out to him with healing, healing energy, for sure. Um, at 1,000, uh, Ernie Abbott is planning to shave his head and mustache, and at 1,500, uh, we have the John Bivens show, Sherry Bivett, is going to shave her muff. Her what? Her muff. What the heck is a muff? Uh, the hair that's on top of the vagina. Oh, okay. No, you know what a muff is. Thank you. Okay, no. seriously, that would just be... I'm sorry, I think every guy would just watch that video over and over and over again. Well, it's going to be uh, sort of like a... Uh... Uh, an R-rated video, but it's not going to show too much except for the hair fall, but that's okay. Uh, well, we appreciate her efforts anyway. Uh, and I gotta, and can I add a, can I add a sweet offer to it too? Uh, what? Go for it. If you can raise, let's see, uh, you, you stopped at a thousand, right? Or two thousand? Uh, no, actually, uh, we stopped at thirty-five hundred. Well, if you for can, our... if you can reach... Thirty-four thousand dollars. That's it. Thirty-four thousand dollars. Yeah. You can. Someone can come onto my show and do a whole entire show, and I would just start up the recorder and I would just back off, and they can do whatever they want. To yeah. whatever they want, and to add another bonus, they I would do a production for them, a free production. Oh, cool. So the so thirty-four thousand dollars. That's the Andy Bond show, and you can replay this anytime you want. Thirty-four thousand dollars. If you reach thirty-four, if someone gives thirty-four thousand dollars, they can come out to my show and do a three-hour show, and I would do a production for them whenever they want a free one. Thirty-four thousand or thirty-four hundred? Uh, thirty-four thousand. Wow! You heard it here first, folks. Uh, that's Andy Bond for you. This is a, he doesn't do anything small. That's for sure. Uh uh. It, I I believe in this thing. If you can reach thirty four thousand dollars, I will do it. I promise you, I won't back down. We'll so have to get the government to install something. <laughs> good luck. You're gonna need it. I don't think you're gonna. I I. If you raise thirty four thousand dollars, I will laugh my head off. I would. All of a sudden, the Wounded Warriors project, you would have to get security. <laughs> Uh yeah, I can just see the I can just see the police department coming up with the armored car right now. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? The good thing about this, we all don't touch that money. None of us, uh, and the speaker ever gets to see that money. That all goes to the Wounded Warrior Project, and it's going for their cause, for their families, for the uh, wounded warriors themselves, and that's what the blessing of this is. We we see not, nothing of that money. We all see the, the things that it does for the wounded warriors and their families. And that is what, the, that's what makes all this worthwhile. I cannot wait for the telethon. It's going to be excellent. I wish I was part of this telethon. I wish. Well, you can always come on at uh, between 3 
uh, Central Time, 3 and uh, 6 a.m., and um, you just jump in with me. And, you know, I'm always here. I'm here for everybody. So at 3 o'clock to 6 o'clock a.m., I can just jump on to my show and start doing a show? Yeah, and then uh, we just patch it together through uh, uh, the uh, Spreaker and uh, through Skype, and hey, uh, we'll have it both going at the same time. Bye, bye, well, bye. Okay, I, I try and make it at 3 o'clock a.m., but on on a, on another note, Wednesday, mark this calendar down, Wednesday, April 9th, 2014th, I'm going to have a special guest on my show, and that's it. I'm not going to tell you who it is. You got to tune in on four, not April 9th, 2014th, at 10 o'clock p.m. or 10.30, give or take, I'm going to have a special guest on, and that's it. I'm not going to tell you who it is. Brat. What? Brat. Nope. I'm not telling you who it is. I got a uh, cookie for you. Who are you talking to, me or someone you. else? You. I'm sorry, I'm not going to tell. But I will tell you this. I will give you one hint. He, he is a senior, and he is from the UK. Ah, cool. Um, James Dean? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we well, well, we'll definitely have to wait until that day to find out. So hopefully everything turns in all right. Uh, hopefully he comes on to my show on April 9, twenty fourteen. Check mark that calendar. There's a special guest coming on, and you know what? Uh, you're going to be surprised because I I heard of this guy. I heard of their song. You got to realize that if you heard of my radio show before, I played this guy's song. One, uh, three times already. Uh -huh. So you got to go back into the archives and remember, it's I played you. I played the song on Exact FM Radio Knows, and Deshaun Porter did it too. Played the exact same song on Christmas. So, good luck. Oh, cool, great. Uh, thank you for the information, and uh, we'll definitely be looking forward to it. And uh, no problem. So, what else is new? So, the Wounded Warriors project is coming. Is it's going to be a 24-hour marathon, so holy cow, I cannot wait. Holy cow, it's going to be one heck of a good show, okay. ladies and gentlemen. You have the all-star cast in here, ladies and gentlemen. And who knows, maybe I would do a show. Who knows? If I get up at about 3 o'clock a.m., who knows, okay? <laughs> if I get up about 3 o'clock a.m., I will, I will type you saying, and I'm up. And I would just do a show, okay? That was it. I would leave it. Okay, I would leave. <laughs> I would say I'm doing a show. Pass me through to your thing, okay? You'll probably just go, hey, I'm shit faced today. Would you mind just splashing more some water on your? <laughs> no problem. I'll do everything I can. Water. Oh, thank you, thank you. I'm awake. Hello, hello, hello. What's up? I'm playing some music here. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna be back on to the show. I in my three hours is done. I'm going to do another show because I'm pumped up. I hope uh, Grandpa L will stay on to my show. As soon as I'm done with this show, I'm going to do another show. We're going to, we're just going to do all kinds of stuff here. We're just going to be talking about random things. Are you ready, Grandpa L? Oh, I can do it. This is, I just want to make sure that I get all the information out there about the Wounded Warriors Project here. And uh, this is, uh, and also to say prayers to a few people out there that, uh, are definitely uh, having a hard time today. Like I said, uh, Edward Stowe, the, uh, the Southern Cowboy, uh, definitely the Sergeant at Arms of Spreaker. Um, say some prayers for him because uh, he's healing from uh, acid wounds that, that was uh, done into his face uh, with an exploded battery yesterday. And a very wonderful friend of mine, his name is... Uh, Justin Spinelli. He's done the Justin Spinelli radio show for a couple of years now, and uh, he's fighting uh, colon cancer, and it's in stage three, and uh, he's having a hard time with uh, energy and getting his motivation up and everything else like that. We're always saying a prayer for him because he's a blessing in our lives, and uh, uh, he's introduced me to some wonderful people, and uh, they become my family as well. So um, that's what I, that's uh, people that uh, really matter most to me. And then Mary, we have Mary Mouse McDaniel from, Fair, from uh, 
uh, Facebook. Uh, she is my editor. She and, is. Yeah, she's my editor of my uh, books, and uh, she's a blessing in my life uh, and everything that she does. Uh, uh, it's always there to be wonderful things. And uh, Amanda B. just says, hey, just now back. This is uh, welcome back, Amanda, and I appreciate your prayers for them. They are, uh, we all have prayers in our life, family in our lives. Hey, Abba Stone is on my Skype. Yeah, cool. He just uh, he popped it. I'm I'm happy about that. I'm happy. Let's find out what, how he's doing. But well, that's let me get to the. Let me see. Let me go to Abbo Stone and see. Okay, just a minute here. Okay, we're waiting live for Edward Stone to appear and see how he is doing. Oh, guess what? He's uh, he's going on mine. Let's let's figure that one out. Hang on. Well, ladies and gentlemen, while we wait, we're gonna do "Made in America" by Toby Keith. Take it away. Start flowing. Yeah, it works. 
I've seen it done. This is, uh, my uncle has a uh, cabin in the woods. He did that, and uh, the uh, electric company hates him. <laughs> so, uh, love that. Uh, now he's got all electrical uh, appliances that he's. So how's the uh, burns, my friend? Uh, how's your eyes doing? They hurt really, really bad. You have them covered? Uh, yeah, I got them covered. Uh, the doctor put uh, ace bandage around my head, mm -hmm. and they put some medicine in my eye, numbed it, and had me do an eye test. I got uh, 2,200 in the left eye, and no vision in the right. Damn it. I hope it's only, I'm praying it's only uh, temporary. They <laughs> said if by Monday it doesn't clear up, uh, I'm supposed to go to an eye doctor uh, that specializes in this kind of burn. But she said that uh, there was already a ton of scarring in my right eye. Wow. So I probably won't never get to see out of it again. Well, yeah, but uh, all your other senses is uh, heightened, I bet. Oh yeah. Well, we might we never we might we never to come up behind him again, okay? Because I really don't want him to do a uh, kick drop on me. A kick drop? Hell, I'm armed and dangerous. <laughs> I know. That's why I said I really don't want you to do. I really don't want. I'm I'm not going to sneak up on you now. Shoot. It would be. It'd be worse if you uh, farted it and masked the smell, so. <laughs> you unfart. <laughs> my wife, she tortured me with them, so it's my, it's my uh, only Achilles heel. Your fallback to them, huh? Yeah, that too. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Andy Bond, and this is the Andy Bond show, and it is the title calling to a show. Calling to the show, and you're right, we are calling to the show. We are talking about everything from Rune Warriors products to Kenosha to batteries to. I think we covered everything from A to Z almost. Women's boobs, nice, soft, squishy. Now we covered everything. Now we, now we covered everything. Okay, good. We we talked from A to Z, Z to A, ladies and gentlemen. We have the we have the two greatest people in the world today that does a radio show, and I'm not kidding you. I they are not paying me to say that. I promise you. Is a zebra white with black stripes, or is it black with white stripes? <laughs> it's been tie dyed. I don't know. <laughs> now we've talked from A to Z. Okay, any Okay, okay, okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to do another show in a, in a few minutes here. Okay, I'm just going to do another show because it's the funniest. <laughs> it is the funniest thing ever that it's funny because I love talking to these guys. Okay, uh, well, I got a secret. I got a message from Ed, and, t and uh, this is from my secret chat room. I do have a secret chat, people. Uh, take note about this. And in the secret chat, it says, Andy, tell Ed that all the guys in John's room will be praying for him, please. Okay, I just did. Thank you. He said... Hey, such a wonderful sentiment. You know what? Ed, you got people all over the place uh, praying for you, and... Uh, I've said this in the front of the show that uh, uh, about your accident, and uh, I've been getting such great responses, especially from uh, Spreaker itself. Um, we had uh, uh, Apocalypse, we had uh, Amanda, we have uh, Amanda in there, we had uh, Patty. She's she's been in there. Uh, she sends her prayers. Who? Uh, Patty. Uh, I'm trying to crawl up on my. My timeline, and they won't do it. They never. Let me try it. Uh, yeah. Thank God I'm on your thing. Yeah, thank God you're on my thing. Patty Hain Foss. Yeah, she's a, a a wonderful person. She even donated today for the Wounded Warriors Project. I'm so you know so happy you know, that uh, she's done it for us. Thank you, Patty. I appreciate it. The last time I, the last time I talked to Jay, they said that the thing was over six hundred dollars now. It's seven hundred eight dollars and thirty three cents. Wow. And a little bit more now 
uh, since Patty did. Uh, it hasn't been registered on there yet, but th I'm pretty sure it will be. And, uh, and uh, I, I hope you heard my, I'm going to say that announcement one more time. If you raise $34,000, if anybody raises 30, if you raise $34,000, I would do a production for anybody here. And I, and they can do a free show on my account. So figure that one out. I, I, it's, it's awesome. So, yeah, uh, I just r raised the pot a little bit. Sorry, I'm not shaving my head because I don't think I would look good at bald. I think the last thing was uh, 3500 and that was uh, uh, Import King of Cali said he would shave his head. Yep. We have some great people on that uh, detail. I can't shave anything because I'm already bald. I, can't, like, I can just, I can see it from my, my side. Of, Holy cow, put some sunglasses on, dude. <laughs> it's so bald, it's so blinding here. I can't see. Well, I showered in, I showered in the dark last night, and I actually used a hair remover for body wash. So I can't help that. It's, that's God. So I want something to shave. I, I I don't even have pubes anymore. It's just gone. So oh, uh, so when your wife has sex with you, he does she does he pass out about other guys? She doesn't have sex with me for the last ten years. I think she'll probably use another. Never mind. I try to behave. This is Wolfie Warrior Project, not my life. <laughs> well, of course, I put that in. Who was on here? Is it Grandpa's or is it uh? What's Simoncast? Oh, I was confused. Sorry, yeah. I can't see what's on there. All I got on is Skype. My wife clicks on the name and calls the person. Ah, oh, okay. It's me. It's uh, it. I got a what? Uh, the white T-shirt on. Uh, no, you have a black T-shirt on. Oh, okay, that's right. I did change it to the black T-shirt, and then I got the little balding on my head with a little ear hair sticking out. I look like a koala. Yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, I look like a koala. That's that. That's uh, what's been referenced then as anyway. Well, what, do you say, what do you say, Grandpa? Is it your hair, your pits, your legs? And I, mean, I know old people have all kinds of hair on their feet. Mm. I don't have hair on my feet. Maybe my knuckles. No, not my knuckles anymore. <laughs> um, that's been rubbed off. Don't ask why. I won't tell you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I well, laugh about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna, I'm, I gotta take, I gotta stop my program and restart this because it's gonna be the funniest thing ever here. Well, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Andy Bond. I'm from the Andy Bond Show. We'll be right back on the Andy Bond Show. So stay, do not touch this dial, please. Uh, actually, actually, you gotta refresh the page. Never mind. Touch, do not touch this dial unless you hear the refresh word, okay? You can touch me. I don't mind. It's as long as it's a girl. I'm not, I'm not with the guys. Uh -uh. Sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, me too. If there was a, if a girl wants to touch me, go right ahead. I'm sorry. I love. Woo! If a girl wants to talk, touch me. Go right ahead. I'm sorry. Lord, have mercy. What? What? I said, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> and you thought this was going to be an adorable show. I <laughs> you. <laughs> you. You think that whenever Al and me get on the show, we're going to have a no more show? Uh, oh. Has anybody heard from Dishon? I uh, know he's been doing Big D Zone for a long for a long time, but no, I haven't heard of him. Holy cow, he's been doing Big D Zone on mine, on my neck of the woods. Well, every time I get on Skype, his uh, name always is in red. They're not disturbed. Holy cow, what's going on? I don't know. We'll figure that out in a little bit. Uh-huh. Well, my name is Andy Bond, and this is the Andy Bond Show. We're going to be taking this thing out with my brand new promo. Take it away. Be nice, say thank you. Please, once in a while. It's a beautiful world we live in. Give your brother a smile. This is Alpha Dog. And you're listening to The Andy Bone Show. <laughs>